What's up Jeepers? Jeep and Bubba here. Been real busy this week and I uh, just want to give you guys an update because I'm not going to have as many videos this week as I normally have. Um, not that I'm building this week, I kind of took a week off because last week was all Jeep build and then we went to drum this weekend which went great. Uh, Caleb, um, one of the guys, you've seen him in the winter overlanding video. Uh, he's our tech guy at JCR. He's coming out with a video and he's got a new YouTube channel called the um, the Off-Road Cinema, so uh, Torque, and uh, go subscribe to that. Um, he'll have a video of uh, our trip up there coming soon, and then I'm going to do kind of like the insider's view of the trip, so his is going to be like a lot more of the wheeling footy, uh, footage of it, a lot less talking, where my stuff's always more talking, and uh, a lot less um, of, the, of the actual shots of the wheeling, although... I will do some that were there are more shots, but it's still gonna be shot vlog style. So I wanna everything I do I want it to be personal. I don't want you to see it from my perspective and like for me I've watched so many off-road videos and um it's just some of them are just you're just watching wheeling and wheeling and wheeling, which is great. Like before I go to a certain area, I like to watch those and get an idea what that area is like. Um but I also want to see kind of like another perspective of it or kind of get an insider's view and um you know that's my style I think um, I tried to do a little bit of the uh, mix like a personal vlog with the off-roading and um, honestly if I had a better skill set at filming I just pretty much would want it to be like Top Gear meets uh, Dirt Every Day meets Roadkill kind of thing but I think that's every person's uh, uh, dream maybe I'm crazy I don't know um, so anyways I got a few minutes here. I got a little bit of a drive ahead of me and I was gonna give you guys up today. So I took my Cherokee out and it did good. I drove six hours up to Drummond and back and everything went really good. Um, I was able to drive there and back with no issues at all to the vehicle. I didn't have to do any repairs to the vehicle on the drive there or the drive back. And that was good. Um, I didn't have like any death wobble there or back. Um, no real vibrations. I was able to go between 70, 75 most of the time. When I was going 70, I was getting 16 miles per gallon. I averaged that the whole way up. So, I mean, that was great. No complaints with the Jeep on that part. The brakes did good on the road. Once I got off road, they seemed to overheat a little bit and got a little spongy. And I think they just need blood again because, uh, as you remember kind of last week, um, when I was working on the Jeep the whole time, uh, I just kept chasing leaks. So I ended up replacing every hard line on the, uh, uh, on the Jeep. Uh, I replaced one of the soft lines in the back, so I kind of extended it from the axle. And then uh, I'm going to be putting some stainless lines in the front, and uh, those are for for a higher lift. And really, those are necessary for about uh, anywhere from like I guess starting at about three and a half inches, but really four inches and up. That's when they're really necessary, and that's what I'm contemplating. So, anyways, that's where this update's going. I know I always ramble, but hey, if you're still listening, I appreciate it. And I uh, hope you find it interesting. And if you don't, at least my mom and my wife know <laughs> where my head is and what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, so uh, I got with Cab Fab 4x4 this week. And uh, we're going to be partnering with them for a new video. I'm going to do an install video of their 3-Link setup. And I'm really excited about this partnership. It's going to be the first real partnership um, that I've done on this XJ. You know, it's funny because when I, got a, when I had the JK, there's a lot of people that I worked with. And um, I like to do everything organically. When I go to a company and I say, hey, um, and this is a note for anybody who sends sponsorship requests to, to companies, all right? This is how it actually works, okay? Um, when I want a product for my vehicle, that's the product I'm gonna run. So on my Jeep, not because I worked at JCR, we make the best Cherokee product. So when I bought it, I wanted to swap to the Mahler bumper. I didn't get sponsored. I get an employee discount, I bought it. Um, I took my warm from my JK, threw it on there. I needed some brakes, I went out and bought them. I knew the brand I liked. I didn't try to get sponsorship. And the thing about getting sponsored is, you need to be able to bring something to the table. So putting a sticker on your Jeep, or wearing your hat and t-shirt, that's not bringing anything to the table. They're, like five people are gonna see that and they're just gonna assume that was a free sticker that came in there. 
Now, what I mean by bringing something to the table is are you going to shows? No, I don't mean are you going to a parking lot with your friends. I don't mean are you uh, going wheeling this weekend with your friends. Everybody's doing that. How many Rough Country stickers, not to knock on Rough Country, but how many Rough Country stickers or Smitty Bill stickers are there out there? Are all those guys sponsored? If so, those companies are out of business. I don't think so. So, you got to bring something more to the table. And so, when I would go to, like last year when I was building my JK, I had a few sponsorships on that on that vehicle like uh, Nitto and Warren and um, what can I bring to the table well I went to like 12 shows last year that were huge shows I went to Jeep Beach Jeep Beach Jam um, went up to All Breeds went to um, Bantam last year I mean I was all over the place in my Jeep and it's in booths where people are going to see it and they're asking me about the product on there and I'm telling them listen the reason I run these tires and I'm not saying this because I get tires for free I promise you those Nittos were phenomenal uh, of the time I had those Nittos, um, I never had a spare, and I never had a plug one, and I put 30,000 miles on it, and the tread was still 50% when I traded it in. Those Nittos were phenomenal. They did great off-road. I never left me wanting for more. Um, anyways, so I brought to the table that I was going to these shows, and then my company I was working for at the time, which was, I used to work for Nitro Gear and Axle, if you didn't know, they were putting those pictures on their website, and they were... Um, pushing and they were pushing that product and it was in pictures on like a major brand's website where it's getting like an actual reach from a company that has actual followers on Instagram and it's actually and, and Facebook and in social media so it's not just reaching your 1,000 or 1,500 or 2,000 friends it's reaching 20, 30,000 people and they're seeing it at multiple shows they're seeing it used off-road in, in videos and, and footage so that's what I would bring to the table so you know now that I'm in um the Cherokee I was like well what am I really bringing to the table well I started my blog and that's not the reason I started it I started my blog because and I tell you this in the first video I've been in this industry for a little bit now and I feel like I can give back a little bit and give people insight just like that last tip if you're gonna go to somebody with a sponsorship that's fine it doesn't matter that you're just uh, let's say you're a random dude off the street who just bought a JKU hey you have a blog like that you actively started and you're actually making videos what kind of how many subscribers do you get how many followers do you get or you can make a personal instagram how many followers is the instagram going to get um do you have the ability to make good footage like seriously good footage um do you have the ability to do actual reviews i don't mean like going on their site and saying it was awesome man i mean like making a video going off road giving actual reviews i mean if it actually sucks the product they send you are going to give a solid review and and be honest and true to it um i mean that anybody can do it and the companies have the right to say yes or no or whatever but what i suggest is the items that you pick to put on your jeep go ahead and pick the stuff that you would have got like like if you're gonna go after somebody if you're gonna build a jeep just assume you're gonna pay for everything make a list of the stuff you want and start saving for it approach those companies if you feel like you have something to offer to them but if they say no or they just offer a discount you already wanted that product. Go with it. Don't go with somebody else just because you couldn't get it for free. And, and that's the deal where I'm, I'm leading up to with Cab Fab. Um, but anyways, the reason I made my vlog when I talked about the first video is I feel like I can give you guys some insight. Um, and I feel like I can answer some questions and I can make some videos, show you things. And I, I really wanted to film more at the shows. It's just I'm being paid to be there, so I'm working. And so it's harder to, to film. And... Maybe I, next show I go to will that'll be SEMA. So maybe maybe it's possible I can make a video on the way out to SEMA. That'd be a cool idea if you guys like that. Maybe I can do that. Um, but the next show I'll be going to is SEMA. It's supposed to be the Great American Jeep Rally this weekend. If you're there, sorry, um, my wife got sick this weekend. I couldn't go, and Corey filled in for me. So you'll see him and Anthony this weekend at the Great American Jeep Rally in Connecticut. And um, anyways, next show will be SEMA. And uh, anyways, I just I go to, I meet all these people in the industry. We all kind of think and talk alike, and I can give you guys some insights. So if there's something you want to see, put it in the comments below. So that's why I made my vlog, is to kind of give you the insider's information. And I, I'm always doing Jeep stuff, like all the time. It's like every day I'm working on my Jeep, or I'm thinking about my Jeep. I'm selling Jeep products for a living. I'm planning Jeep trips. My wife loves Jeep stuff. Uh, we're having a baby, and we're already talking about Jeep stuff related to the baby. So um, I just decided to film that, and... and, and maybe people find it interesting maybe they don't but i'm just gonna keep doing it because it's it's fun for me to actually like document things and go back but i'll quit rambling like i said i've got a drive here and i'm trying to burn a little time but um 
back to partnering with Cab Fab, I knew after this weekend's wheeling trip, I need a long arm. Those short arms, I have the uh, zone adjustable um, with the himes at the end, and then the top are just um, fixed arms uh, for the uppers. And they're good. They're good on the road. They ride well. I like the fact that their bottoms are adjustable. They were silent. They rode great. And Kevin and actually, you know, he bought those. Those were a sponsor deal. And um, they were good. Uh, but they don't droop very far. And that's a problem with this, the short arm. There's just the angle's not there for the droop. And I was running lines like I was still my Wrangler. And it, that wasn't a Wrangler. You know, it's light. It's got good power, 35 inch tires are good. The Centennials held it pretty good. And, um, but I, I just, it left a lot to the imagination. So I need a little bit more room in my fender wells. I need to fix my brakes. I want to do a long arm so I get that full droop and articulation. I'm still daily driving this. So I've got to really some things I'm going to be doing that are going to take away from that but are also going to help me off road and what's scary is going into the winter where there's going to be some snow on the road I want to make sure this thing's stable well I was talking to David over at Cab Fab 4x4 he's a smart guy we've traded some information back and forth just you know he's actually a customer of ours and we're a customer of his and I, I just I've been shopping it and I've looked on the market and there's a lot of great kits and we did the BDS kit on uh, Real Hawk and um I just kind of want to do something different and I've been looking at their stuff and they're you know just a good solid um, company they're making a good product and they're um, I, I just looked at it and I thought hey this is a kit that I know I can install in the amount of time that I have and I think it's gonna give me the ultimate performance and so I talked to him uh, we're gonna shoot an install video of that hopefully next week that's being hopeful because I got my in-laws coming in town so I gotta get my house ready for that next weekend but hopefully the next week or two we'll have an install video of that that'll be on here and i think they might be sharing it on their social media but you'll see how that goes and then maybe i'll do a little uh, after the install video i'll give you guys a, a idea of what it's flexing to i'm thinking about changing my springs so if you have suggestions for that that'd be much appreciated um not because they're bad they're zoned and they actually ride really well i have a three inch spring in the front and a, a three quarter inch spacer in, in the front and then the back is uh three inch packs and a one inch drop bracket but um oh hey look, there's a jeep on rv i don't know if you'll see it or not jeep wave ah, see it okay anyways uh it was a nice little tj it was a nice rv <laughs> anyways so uh i want to add about you know a half inch to three quarters inch lift all the way around the rear i got plenty of room um the front i don't i'm getting into the sway bar a little bit which i'm actually gonna get rid of it uh the and i'm getting into the fin not the fender flare the notches but actual like metal fender on the inside i'm rubbing a little bit so i've got bump in there and that's keeping it from really crushing the fender but I don't want to limit up travel completely, so I figured if I can just get a little bit more space in there to flex, it would be good. Plus, if I can get that that rubber space right there, the springs will ride even better. So I think I'm thinking going BDS if they'll break a kit apart for me and just do springs, or um, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know. So if you got some suggestions, I want to go about totally i really want to have about four and a half inches of lift when it's all said and done i'd be fine with five inches and that's where i ended up but i don't want anything over that i'm gonna get rid of my sway bar on the front i drove an hour and a half this weekend without sway bar on the front it convinced me that i don't really need it it's not doing a huge amount of good and i'm rubbing on it and um i can swell my sell my in links not to not to um break off what i'm talking about but if you need any tj parts so i have upper and lower rear tj arms they're not adjustable they're just fixed arms for like a four and a half inch lift i'm about to, i have an Ana 30 front carrier um just open i have a um uh about to have my short arms for the xj and the front disconnects that are uh, all that zone and 
probably my springs eventually. Uh, Corey's looking to get an XJ2, so he may get those. Uh, but anyways, that's, uh, if you're interested in that, just let me know. Uh, message me on Facebook, uh, Bradley Powell Coron on Facebook, or the Jeep and Bubba page. Now, that's a new thing. There's now a Jeep and Bubba page, so go and like it. Uh, it's been doing pretty good. And then also check out Instagram, at Jeep and Bubba. There's some funny pictures up this week. Uh, I did a couple funny ones, and we had some, some footage from uh, coming back from uh, drumming with the Rocks and Valley. So, anyways, I'm going to wrap all this up. There's going to be a lot of new parts going on in Cherokee, as much as I can afford to do. New partnership with Cab Fab 4x4. I'm so excited about that long arm. First long arm I ever had in my life. I had short arms, I had mid arms, I never had a long arm. So, I'm over the top excited about that. And then... Um, New parts that I currently have, transfer case, skid plate going in, nitro lunchbox locker going in up front, uh, over the knuckle steering from JCR, that's going in as well, and I'll have videos of all that, and the video from Drum Drummond Island and Rocks and Valleys, that'll be coming up hopefully this weekend, Whew. and then Caleb's video from the Offroad Cinema, that's coming up. That should be up in the next couple of days, so a lot to look forward to. As always, if you have any comments for me below, any any additional ideas for mods, what do you think about revolver uh, drop down brackets in the back? I drove with a guy this weekend that everyone says you can't ride on the road with him, and he drove all over with us. He did good. He did fine. So, what do you think about those? Um, rear locker. I'm still thinking selectable. If you guys have any suggestions on that. Uh, I gotta get an amp for my speakers because they're wired in the speakers and the amp we're in. Uh, yeah, I guess that's about it for now. Um, they're already re the whole thing's already re geared, so don't really need that. Power's been great in it. I'm not changing tire size, although, if I'm lucky. We'll see. There may be a wheel and tire change going on. It would just be a trade. Uh, so we'll see about that. Uh, look for the JCR Comanche coming out. The paint should be done this week. And it's going to be awesome. Um, Daryl's been posting a lot of stuff on that. On the JCR page. That's going to be cool. So it's our SEMA build. We're building an MJ. So you really like that. Whew. What was the other parts I was thinking about? I don't know. It's all going to be steering and suspension. And lockers. So... What I'm really wanting to do is more articulation, locking it up, get a little bit more space for flex, and now I can really start picking lines and going into a little, little bit slower. You'll notice in the German video, I'm having to build up momentum to do stuff because I'm, I'm open diff front and rear, and I'm not able to get that tire flex in every place I want it to be. And I'm also kind of learning where, uh, where the Jeep is. I haven't wheeled a Cherokee in three years, so I'm kind of learning its size. It's like a trail cow. Hey, go and bug Anthony, so Pizza Tony, I think he's Jeep Freak Tony on uh, Instagram, to make some trail doors for XJs. I haven't bugged him about it yet, but me and me and Daryl have been talking about it, and Daryl's kind of bugged him a little bit. Trail doors for Cherokees, like legitimate trail doors that are supportive. The problem with like tube doors is that when you're flexing, the unibody's flexing, so a door that's actually just cut lower and isn't ugly and actually supports the unibody as, you, as you're driving, man, that'd be killer, killer item. Pizza Tony, get on it, brother. Anyways, I rambled enough. I really appreciate you guys listening. Um, if there's anything I can do uh, video-wise or if you have any comments for me, uh, let me know. And uh, I guess that's about it. God bless America. God bless you all for watching and, and supporting me. And uh, I really appreciate it. We'll be seeing you guys 